Hello. Out here, Tomahawk MX. I have the bald bandit today. He's left a piece for good luck, apparently. Yeah. Um, this is Ross. Ross has been training with me from basically day one on a dirt bike, yeah, kind of, yeah. sort of. How many times have you ridden a dirt bike before you went to my first ever class? Uh, five times okay. on the track. And then... Had no idea what he was doing. Got badly hurt the first time at my school. Actually, back then I was big, big time like, all right, dust yourself off, you're fine. And Ross is the personality that always pretends he's fine, even when he's not, I think. So what ended up happening? You had a blood transfusion? Yeah, I had two blood transfusions. I ended up lacerating my liver, and I finished the class. <laughs> so he's laying on the ground, like kind of complaining about his stomach. I'm like, you're fine, man. Just got the wind knocked out of you. He's a brand new rider, so I just assumed he was fine. Finishes the class, and then goes to the hospital that night, and had blood transfusions, had a bunch of stuff internally was messed up. So that ever since that day, I've learned, like, okay, you never know. like. Got to be careful. But crazy thing is, he could have made the decision at that point to just quit. But he came back and started. He he made the decision to go to my classes and go to my classes only. Right? Didn't you actually? You and your mom made the decision to not race the whole year. We only went to HA classes, and I didn't race one single race that whole year. There was people pressuring on the race like crazy, and they just stuck to the game plan of okay, we're, we don't want to race because racing will just force me to go faster than when I'm comfortable, I'm going to reinforce bad habits, so really what's the point? And he stuck with just going to my classes all year long, which was a super smart strategy. The next year you began racing, right? Yeah. And now this is year three or four? Third year. Oh my God. So now he's only on his third year, just qualified for Loretta's. So he's, we're down here, this is the week before Loretta's. Who knows when this is gonna post? But qualified in 250C. Yep. And we're gonna get some motos in last minute. So this has kind of come full circle. His goal after that, I think that first year when he began racing was, man, if I could ever just go to Loretta's, that would be amazing. And he's freaking stuck to it, made it happen. But uh, Ross is a prime example of just do the technique. Don't worry about going fast and the speed will begin to come. I've noticed this year with Ross, like it's been very obvious that something's clicked and he's automatically just started going faster without having to try to go faster, right? I've never had to think about going faster or pushing myself to the point where I think I'm gonna get hurt or I've always been safe the whole time yeah, I've been riding. Yeah, that's the whole idea. So he's built speed maybe slower than some, but not really, it's still three years he's gone from barely being able to ride a dirt bike to um, qualifying six at the regional, seven? Six. Six at the regional, qualified to the Loretta's, Realistically, it could be a threat for top 10, which is huge. That, I mean, that's amazing. So we're gonna bust out a 20 minute moto, yeah? Yep. Okay. Uh, he might have an easier time with it than me. Oh my God. <laughs> we don't know how long I'm gonna make it, but I'll... I'll... Oh boy. Yeah. Well, we're gonna, tr we're gonna go for a 20. This will be his last day on the bike before Loretta's. And um, yeah, you guys will have a chance to watch a little bit of Ross's technique. Pretty darn good. One, some of the best technique I've seen for a sea rider. And he's not going to be a seal-up rider for long, actually. If we go B right after the Loretta's, right? Yep, as soon as I get back, I'm going to B. Yep, that's awesome. All right, 20-minute moto. Shit, here goes nothing.
I haven't been properly, I haven't been properly roosted in a long time. Dude, you're going fast. I'm gonna be honest. I was going, I was probably going 65 to 70 percent speed. That's fast, and I was not catching him that much at all. Like, did, were you able to see where I was? Or yeah, a couple times. Yeah. Nothing like freaking background noise. Um, it took me a little while to get to you. And then that was fun because we were just playing the game of like just trying to get around people. And I was trying to preserve the GoPro. So like every time I saw a roost coming, I was turning my head just so it would hit the side of my helmet. And I was wiping the GoPro like crazy. And then when I caught you, I hope the GoPro got it and it wasn't all smudged with dirt. I was everywhere. Like did you hear me on your right side and then yeah, I was on you, your left side? I could never tell where you were because it was different every time. Every I was gonna corner. try to block pass you hard, but I couldn't really get close. I was hoping that we were gonna get more laps before they waved us off, but I need more of that myself. Like, that reminds me of like what motocross is. I, I don't really get roosted ever. I don't get dirt in my mouth really ever. It's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. <laughs> All right, dude. Well, good luck at Loretta's. That was the last time you, that was the that was it, right? I'm pretty sure, yeah. And this is the race bike, so we gotta preserve the race bike. Yeah. So that was it. Okay. Shave the spots that you freaking missed. Um, shout out Mackenzie with the camera work today. Chances are this video won't be usable. I'm sure you messed something up. I'm sure it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, subscribe to the Moto Academy, would you guys? We have an awesome community down there. Subscribe. All the money I'm making for the Moto Academy just goes towards these videos to just make it better and better for you guys. We have a bunch of really exciting stuff happening. So stay tuned and uh, see you guys next video. Toodaloo.